Yarrick still lives. These are the words that have been uttered through the whispers of the warp. There's been a few whispers about the next big narrative campaigns that are going to be coming to Warmer 40,000 in 10th edition, and one of them is surrounding Yarrick. It's basically the return to Armageddon. So let's jump in and let's get waffling. Now, for those of you who haven't really been following the story of Yarrick, what we had is this legendary hero of the Imperium basically dying in his sleep during the 9th edition Codex launch for the Astra Militarum, aka the Imperial Guard. Yarrick was confirmed to have died. What we got was like, I think it was like a two-page spread. We got a bunch of bones on there that was dressed up in Yarrick's uniform, and it said Yarrick had died peacefully in his sleep. Some people was like, okay, that's a nice little end to Yarrick but a lot of people are like this is absolute BS Yarrick is this legendary hero of the Imperium there's no way he's dying in his sleep he will die on the battlefield fighting the enemies of the Imperium so a lot of people didn't believe that Games Workshop officially killed him off and that he was still out there fighting against the enemies of the Imperium and now, from what I'm hearing from the whispers in the warp, is that that actually is true. I'm hearing that there is going to be a few big narrative 40k campaigns, and one of them may involve Yarrick and his return to Warhammer 40,000. Now, I'm not saying that Yarrick has got to get a brand new model or anything like that. I'm just saying that what I'm hearing through the whispers is that Yarrick may be a main part in this next big narrative, which which one of them is the return to Armageddon. Now, when it comes to Armageddon, and especially on this channel, I've been talking about this now for bloody Emperor's Golden Balls, about six, six plus years. It all started with, um, you know, Angron's return because he was banished on Armageddon, you know, Gaz Skull going back there, the so-called, you know, Gaz Skull fight in Angron, which may still be, a, you know, a, a big thing in the, in the future campaign, which we'll get on to in a second. So I think Armageddon is this huge part of the 40k franchise. It's probably one of the most renowned planets out there in the Imperium because the wars that we've had on there, you know, the, the Demon Grey Knights um, and the Imperial Guard, the first War of Armageddon, which was swept under the rug and then you have the big invasions by the orcs because a lot of people still don't know that armageddon is not officially armageddon armageddon is Ulanor. Ulanor was the center of the Orc Empire back during the Great Crusade. And during the Beast Arises series, the Imperium said, okay, let's destroy this planet so the Orcs don't have anything to basically go back to and look up to and stuff like that. But the Admech, seeing all the Orcish technical wonders on that planet decided to teleport it to a whole different place in the galaxy so they could keep working on it and keep doing ad met things under of course um well without the high lords and the imperium knowing but of course the orcs are still drawn to the planet so this is why we keep having waves upon waves upon waves of orcs trying to take back armageddon because to them it's Ulanor, it's their terror, it's their homeworld. So this is why the Orcs want it so much. Now, the other big narrative I keep hearing about, it's all about chaos and the Nackman Gauntlet, uh, the Great Rift, etc., etc. like the Imperium trying to breach through to find different points. And I'll talk briefly about that during the latter part of this video. For now, I just want to focus um, on Armageddon itself because if we do return back, and I, I personally think we are going to return back because I trust these whispers in the warp. Just because I trust them doesn't mean you have to trust them, like I always bloody say. Uh, but if we do go back, it opens up a lot of big stories and a lot of big character returns. The Templars can come back. You know, Grimaldus is maybe going back there. Helbrecht going back there. Now that we've got Primarch's return to the scene, maybe Gilliman is going to take command of Armageddon and start, you know, uh, deploying his forces. The Lion, of course, has returned. Gaz Skull, the, 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 the biggest orc that we've seen in millennia, is gathering an orc force with him unseen before like 
millions upon millions of ships, just countless numbers of greenskins all ready to war their way onto the planet, into that system, and take it back for the greenskins. And this rumor of the potential return to Armageddon also ripples into other things I'm hearing about. And I just want to say, before I start uttering these next sentences, we are really going down the hole. This deep, damp, dark, wet hole, okay? I feel like I need a foil for this part of the video. Well, well, well. Because well. I am hearing that potentially the orcs are going to be one of the main threats in 11th edition they are going to be one of the big narrative points like we had necrons in ninth we're having tyranids now in 10th apparently it's looking like it's going to be orcs in 11th edition and then that opens up a bunch of other things i'm actually going to go on record right now and say again you can clip it if you want if i'm wrong i'm wrong i personally think the 11th edition launch box and again i've heard some whispers about this the 11th edition launch box for warmer 40,000 is going to be space marines versus orcs i'm gonna go down record and say it right if i'm wrong i'm wrong right you can all come back and laugh at me and stuff like that but that's what i'm going with at this current time also it ripples into other rumors as well the space wolves remember what i've been saying like what uh, towards the end of 9th edition i heard that 10th edition was going to have a blood angel refresh a dark angel refresh and a space wolf refresh which i didn't take seriously because i was like there's no way games workshop are going to do three big sub chapters like that in one in one edition We've had the Dark Angel stuff, or part of the Dark Angel stuff. This summer is looking its lo looking like it's going to be the Blood Angels. And towards the end of the edition, I'm hearing in the Whisperverse, that it's supposed to be the Space Wolves. And the Space Wolves hate the Greenskins. And the Space Wolves, of course, were an integral part on fighting on Armageddon. So maybe the narrative is going to involve the Space Wolves. There's rumors and stuff like that about Lehman Russ's return and stuff. What if it's actually on Armageddon? The Wolf returns. The end time is on Armageddon. You can have like, all of the bloody Primarch showing up. Angron can, can show up, but we've discussed that to a blue in the face before. But what I'm trying to get down to is that all these whispers, all these rumors that I'm starting to hear are slowly connecting with each other and it's sounding like it's going to blow us all away. I'm absolutely excited to see what's on the horizon now with the future narratives in warmer 40,000. and if you're really getting hyped about all this space wolf stuff and everything like that check out this friday's video foil friday the foil apparently has evidence that the space wolf refresh is happening and you know what they say about the foil it can see into the future it has the power now moving on just briefly to end the video let's talk about the other narrative that i've heard about because if one happens then potentially the other one can happen and vice versa and stuff like that and the other one i'm hearing about is chaos chaos space marines abaddon and the knackman gauntlet the great rift and everything like that we're actually getting the dawn of war fire series which is a rev revolving around this story where the imperium is trying to make um different paths through the great rift so they can reinforce the northern parts of the imperium the next dawn of firebook the hand of abaddon it's called if i'm not mistaken should be out soon so hopefully that opens our eyes uh, to a lot more of the narrative situations happening in that book but what i have heard is that chaos may be successful in the knackman gauntlet um harken will claimer may actually win his battles against the imperium and chaos will be getting a big big victory now i theorize this is where potentially we could see more new New chaos space marine launches i've been saying now for a long time that i've been hearing about huron blackheart getting a new model and i think this narrative could be the perfect setup to have that figure have that leader have that model return to the 40k setting and like hey i'm the one that basically was here at the Nackman Gauntlet without me, you wouldn't have done this. Abaddon won't like it. They have that kind of, you know, back and forth of each other kind of thing. But I personally think that is definitely going to happen. Well, um, Huron getting a new model, I definitely think is going to happen this edition. But again, rumors are rumors. Believe what you want to believe. They're all lies until it's proven over on the GW website. Anyway, enough waffling for me. 
thank you for coming thank you for watching um if you've got any thoughts feedback anything like that do you think we will return to armageddon if we do do you think yarrick is still alive and he's gonna play a major role in there i do think right if we do return to armageddon yarrick should die during that narrative there he should die in his bed right with his pjs on he should be dying on armageddon the world that he has been fighting on since forever right so that is his grave that is where he deserves to die thank you for coming thank you for watching have a good day night evening wherever you are and bye bye